you went to Safeway in King Supers, and you check out at King Supers, you bring your groceries to the front, you put them on the belt, and you pay for them, they get bagged, you go home. But at Safeway, you know, you pay for your eggs in the back, you pay for that. It's confusing, it's frustrating, nothing's the same, it's not cohesive. So, I agree, I think that would be powerful. But it is, I mean, even if you go to two different grocery stores and the eggs are located in aisle four. Yeah, that's still like frustrating, that, exactly. You just, I hate coming to the store. Yeah. It's not that you hate coming to the store, it's that you're just so used to what you know. And you like that little bit of calmness to get the eggs when you need to get them. Over. But I think... I think we do need to go ahead and implement this in our training, but I think it would be nice to be able to say, you know what, I've just got, I'm just seeing some stuff happening, like we're all seeing it now, like we're seeing right now all of our discipline stuff rising right now because we got the break coming, mm -hmm. and we've got, and it was a full moon, and yes. all of it, it's the <laughs> truth, and we're seeing it more happening and more happening, and then it starts to calm down, but I also think it's a contribution to our employees because they're getting burnt out too. Yeah. But we should all be okay even before we get to that break. Exactly. We, and I've always said, what you do at the beginning of the school year sets the tone, sets the the tone for the rest of the year. Which is so beautiful because that's what Pyramid Plus is all about. Front loading that work in the beginning. You might be working really hard at the beginning, but it's going to make the rest of your year so much easier. You're going to have everything ready to rock and roll and you it, it really does diminish that burnout. Piece. And and the same thing happens in the classroom, right? Yeah. Um, and so teachers feel it too. But when you've got those expectations in place and they're easy for kids to see and understand, it's so easy to circle back and say, "Whoa, guys! You know, we're getting a little off of our game plan here. This is what we're focusing on." And and we keep them focused on those three rules because you already introduced it. They've already been doing it. Maybe we just fell off the wagon a little, but it's easier to circle back rather than all of a sudden trying to crack the whip in exactly. December when mm -hmm. we've been kind of loosey-goosey as it's getting. Because I'll tell you what, kids, even though they scream and act like they don't want it, they love structure. They thrive on structure. It doesn't have to be overbearing structure, but a framework in which to operate it makes them feel safe and it makes them more um, encouraged to, you know, participate because it, it feels safer when the box is only this big versus when the box is this big. Right. For some kids, that is just too much, and they end up not knowing what to do with themselves and their bodies and how to act because there's just there's too much space. And you'll find that the teachers and the bus drivers, you know, obviously they're really strict. It's not working. But the ones with no boundaries, it's not working either. But just kind of a healthy framework from which to remind kids makes them feel really good. Because when two-year-olds come to our classroom, they're not crying at drop-off anymore because we've kind of given them this, okay, here's how we do school. And then they say, okay, I can work with that. I think the training for the, the, the drivers, and I think being a part Valerie, when we do the bus safety at the schools, <coughs> would yeah, be yeah, really, yeah. really bus good. Bus safety, what's that? We do a bus, Valerie. Can Actually, you know, I, I, so I attended bus safety at Denison for Everett, and you guys did a great job of inviting the parents, and I'm shocked. I was the only one there. I'm like, am I supposed to be here? <coughs> the, you captured those kids' attention with a water jug and the eggs. They were... They, they did a great job. I mean, the kids were so excited. And then it's great, the one said, I didn't see that egg! And they went back and did another egg. They were so enthusiastic. So I really think like that is already such a strength and you could add to it even more. So, and it's great. And I do love our safety program, but that one card that you had that we could hand out to the kids mm -hmm. to take home, you know, because we, we do coloring books, we're doing stickers, you know, but I think even adding a color of your materials and some of the stuff that you're bringing up to our bus safety program would be really awesome. Yeah. Well, if you're already teaching it to the kids, then you just want to be able to reinforce it. So if there's something with an egg then that's meaningful to the kids and it means something to them, then that's something you can have in the buses to just reiterate and something you can keep bringing up so that you are having those consistent messages from everybody all throughout the year and it reminds kids what they're supposed to be doing. Because if you only say it the first time that Everett goes on the bus, he's five. He is truly not going to remember unless someone reminds him um, the next time he goes on the bus. 
He's six. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like I fresh out. Fresh to six. Six. He's, he's a six. fresh six. He's Doesn't fresh matter. Six. He's six. <laughs> My daughter went to a triathlon. It was like a little kids triathlon. And her sister went. And when you go to a real triathlon, they put your age on marker on your calf. And so they did it for the kids. And they said, "What's your age?" And she was like, four and a half. So the lady marked a four and. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, too, um, there's, you know, so many little things like Brooke was saying, but, um, you know, even she even has, we have this puppet, the kids adore pickles. And so we were going to pick on Bobby with a puppet, but we didn't, but, um, you know, she comes out and she's the real follower. Oh, Josie, you sat so quietly in the meeting. We're so proud of you. You did such a great job. So, you know, you can just pull up this puppet and you guys are doing a great job sitting back there. Go sharks. You know, just simple little things that, you know, maybe that one guy who's not very, he's like, oh, That's that giraffe old man doesn't want to drive, you know, maybe like just pulling out that yeah. little thing yeah. in the stop. It might make him more warm and inviting for those kids. There's so many things that. Yeah, like we said, this is just kind of a yeah. real tip of the iceberg overview. There's thousands and thousands of techniques you can introduce to reinforce your messages but getting that getting that message deciding what it is um, is the first step I think and then getting into the bus drivers in a way that's meaningful for them and useful for them um, and then trickling it down to the kids. Yeah. So do you need to be like certified in the parent class to like use the material or you know no okay. no um but Vanessa and I are training, so part of our certification is to go through the full parent training. So we're teaching the full 45-hour, 18-session training. That um, actually might not be a bad idea. If some of you are interested, we're actually doing it for free. It's usually kind of an expensive training, but we're starting in mid-January, and it'll go end before spring break. Um, it's once a week um, down in Broomfield. But it might be something that you consider doing just to um, you being the experts and the supervisor kind of having that bigger picture of what that kind of technique can look like and helping bus drivers implement the pieces that are appropriate for them. So the pyramid also does a class for parents. And I kind of put bus drivers in that same um, group as the parents because they may be people who are interacting with kids all the time, but they're not necessarily people who have been trained or have a lot of experience on how to work with kids. So we do like six, it's a six session training class once a week with parents. So yours might end up being something where you create mini sessions for bus drivers where they're learning one particular technique you know, maybe they're working on positive language one, one training session, and they have materials to take with them to practice that for the next month or whatever till they meet again. But you could consider something like that, where maybe you guys as supervisors have a big, full training picture, and you're, bu you're picking out the meaningful nuggets for your bus drivers. And as you guys move down the line, if you guys decide this is something you guys do work with, you know, I think it's what Bals wanted is we became the demonstration site, we put the practices into place, and then after that, we are kind of like, well, why are we going to pay a bunch of people to train us now that we kind of have the feel for it? So we decided to go ahead and we made our own trainers, like Brooke and I, and we actually made <coughs> our own coaches. So um, that's yeah. really fun. You go up to the mountains in the summertime, you stay for four days, it's super fun. And you do, um, you go through their cadre, and then you become certified in it, and then you have your own certified trainers in the new department. So um, that's what we did as Bell Swan. So we really think this is something you guys could pioneer and really become kind of like pave the way for school districts to do it. I know Denver Public Schools is starting to do some of it. Um, but if you guys are such a big district, I really think that this could benefit you guys. Oh, absolutely. So. Absolutely. Yeah. So then we can just work with you guys then on how we want to implement this because yeah, I think it we would can really talk. be good. Yeah, we oh, can and work. you can talk as a department, like Vanessa said, to, what do you want? Do you want people to come in and train? Do you want to become trainers yourself? I mean, there's lots of, there's a myriad of options you can take to get to where you want to be. Um, I think it's helpful to have people at the beginning who've done it giving you ideas, um, but like I said, you guys are already experts in transportation. Yeah. You know the day, the 
the problems of the bus, the great things that are going on the bus, how the schedule works, how much time the bus drivers really have to interact with the kids or you know, in between sessions or whatever. So, so this is just some more information. Um, there's some more history stuff in these packets that I'll leave for you guys. There's these websites, that's all in there. Um, if you guys ever want to go to a leadership meeting, um, we're happy to set that up for you. You could tour a demonstration site, we're happy to do that as well. Or like we said, become a Pyramid Plus certified coach or trainer. Um, and there is the center's information on the left, and there's my information and books information. I think you guys already have our email addresses, so you we're easy to find. Could we maybe write our name down on a sheet of paper with all of our emails? Yes, that would be great. Can you send us the great. PowerPoint? Yeah, we sure can. I'm a, you've been taking pictures, but here's a copy of the presentation. And if I, I made another one, then uh -huh. at least you'll have the contact. Yeah. yeah, so I will send around a piece of paper right now, and then if you guys could also fill out these evaluations for us, that would be awesome. Um, Do you guys have more questions? Or I feel like maybe you have thoughts. I think questions? you guys did an awesome job. Yes. You guys did. Yes. I do have a question. Yes, yeah. uh, and you, I don't want to extend your presentation, but you mentioned the one percent of the kids. Yes. Um, do you have somewhere else techniques for dealing with them? Because I have discovered over the years of supporting drivers that almost every year we have one or two kids on certain buses that are just their role in their family is to be the misbehavior. Yeah. And so no, no reward is going to correct them because if you give them a reward, they don't believe that they really deserve that reward. So anyway, that. I mean, I had a mother that just broke down crying when I was talking to her. She said, I've raised four boys, the other three are perfect gentlemen. This kid is driving me crazy. Yeah. But that was his role in the family. You could just tell that. Right. Well, to be honest, those behaviors <coughs> become routine. And until you teach kids a different way to behave, they're going to continue doing that. And some of them have been practiced for so long that they just become really difficult to break. But yes, the answer to that question is, um, the full pyramid training goes into lots of techniques on the bottom of that pyramid, but the other half is about dealing with the kids who are at that top percent of the um, pyramid and what to do with them. And it's certainly something we could share with you or create something for the bus drivers that talks to what we can do with that 1% of kids. Um, or like I said, you can attend the training sessions too and those go into really full depth. Yeah, because that would have been about 70% of my phone calls to parents to support drivers are involving about a half of 1% of the kids. <laughs> in yeah, the right. And it's usually that way in the classroom. Mm -hmm. But that's why kind of creating that environment where you're supporting a better choice, a different choice, and you're really giving kids a different way to behave. Um, and it does take some one-on-one -on -one work, but if the bus driver is really tuned in to that one kid and can focus some quality attention on them, then I think you can see a transformation in behaviors. And the nice, the really hard thing about the bus is I can't imagine being a teacher and trying to teach face backwards and not ever going over to specifically talk to a kid. Like, that's hard, really hard. Um, that's harder than being a teacher in a classroom. But on the other hand, you're in a really contained bubble with a really smaller set of objectives that you need to accomplish in a day. So in that way, it makes it a little bit easier to tackle for a bus driver, because they don't have quite so much stuff to worry about. They're just keeping it. It's easier, but it's harder, because we I've had well-meaning teachers tell our drivers, you know, well, we just put them in time out. Like, well, we don't have time out. Yes. <laughs> so, well, the that. thing of time out is, what, all you did was tell the kid that they shouldn't have done what they did. Mm -hmm. But did you teach the kid what they should have done instead? Mm -hmm. No. They have no idea when that same situation comes up tomorrow mm -hmm. what they should do. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't even have promoted that. Um, another thing too is once you get to that top part of the pyramid, there's something that we do called uh, behavior support plans. So we really look at that behavior and say, okay, we don't want to see this behavior anymore. This is the new behavior we're going to teach in place. So it's called prevent, teach, and reinforce. So there's all kinds of ways to get that, diminish that 1% and really help I that I can child. give you an example. So in my class, kids grab all the time. They just take toys out of kids' hands, right? But that's all they know to do. So we have to teach them a new behavior to do instead. So after they ask,